here we are yet again on our way to work. Doesn't really feel like spring out yet. But I think we'll get there eventually. So I'm sitting in my office and I hear some rumbling. I think uh, I think Grampy's got the 36 Dodge out playing with it. Airflow sensor. That's it. So there possibly might be a brake booster or master cylinder issue with the 36 Dodge. Brakes are there, but the tires need to lock up on, on wet pavement. Yeah. That's your problem. Get that adjusted, you'll probably be alright. The problem seems to be that there's a little rod up there that's stopping the pedal from going any further. There, you can see it there. But when that pedal comes up like that, it's hitting up against that rod. There's your problem right there. So it seems like the lever or lever, however you want to say it, on the brake booster is too short on the new booster. So let's see if they can get that swapped out. One of the struggles that we run into once in a while, uh, being a used car dealership, is the location of our dealer tags. We have four of them. Right now we have on the hook where we normally keep them. One, two, three. And the fourth one is nowhere to be found. So the hunt is on. Now it's beginning to look a little bit more like spring. The sun's out. The sun is out, the skies are clear. Off to the stables. So I haven't updated you guys on the 2012 Kia Soul uh, lately, the one that we trailered to the dealer in St. John. Initially, the problem was thought to be because the uh, factory key lost its programming, it wouldn't program, therefore it wouldn't start the car. They were able to do their thing uh, in the beginning, which meant they had to program the key. Unfortunately, the key wouldn't program due to a problem with uh, the security module. The security module was 200 bucks, so we had them put that in and they were, they were able to program the key. Unfortunately, the story doesn't stop there. When they got the key programmed, they were still initially having the problem with it turning over and not starting, which is what it was doing at our shop. So just to give you a little bit of backstory, before the key was lost for that car, we were driving it. Um, we moved it for a snowstorm so that we could plow. And once we put it back and parked it, I mean, again, it was running perfectly. And then, of course, we couldn't find the key for a while. I will put a card up above so you guys can follow this story right from the beginning. So where did I leave off? Oh, yeah. So the car lost the keys, car wouldn't start, tows it to the dealer, and now it still won't start. The dealer is telling me that for some reason they believe that the engine is out of time. And again, I have a hard time with that because, pardon the pun, because 
the car worked perfectly before it went up and now it does not. Those things have a timing chain. Timing chains, as a rule, are pretty durable, so I can't imagine anything breaking. They did verify that. They checked the plugs, the plugs were fuel soaked a little bit just from all the cranking over, so they dried them out, put them back in, still nothing. Um, they did a test on the crank sensors, and the crank sensors were fine, so they're telling me that I should consider tearing the front of the motor apart for the sake of checking timing issues, or simply put a new motor in it. Well, the more money we spend on this thing, the less, uh, it, the less valuable essentially the vehicle becomes to us, it becomes more of a liability. So I guess ultimately where we stand is, is we think that we're likely going to end up having to go get the car and drag it back home. They've done everything that they can. The dealer, uh, you know, they're, they're the ones that know all the stuff they're supposed to know because they have the equipment um, that is specific to the Kia products so we will be doing another video very shortly of um, the Kia Soul because as you know this thing has been a pain in my side ever since the first time we found out we lost the keys so the Kia saga continues so if any of you guys follow me on a regular basis, um, in the description down below, you'll see some of the people that I follow, uh, some of these car channels. So if you're a car enthusiast and you'd like to see that uh, sort of thing, uh, look them up. There's a link down below. One of the fellows' name uh, you, on YouTube is Dirty Max Jack. And Jack has not only the YouTube channel, but he's also got a clothing line called Enthusiast and part of the program that he's running right now is if you order any of his merchandise from his website your name goes into a ballot for a Honda Grom motorcycle so I figured that I would put my name in there I wanted to buy one of his uh, t-shirts so I bought one of his t-shirts for every five dollars you spent you got one entry in for the Honda Grom so I bought a t-shirt and a sticker and the total came to 30 something dollars so with that $30 I got five uh, five entries in for the Honda so right now I'm going to pick up the t-shirt and the stickers that I got from enthusiasts my package says it's been delivered uh, they haven't processed it yet so I will come back tomorrow and uh, see if it's been processed so stay tuned for that well guys it's been a busy week we sold some vehicles we got a few holes in the lot and we'll have to fill them up with some four-wheel drive trucks come first of the week it's uh, it's glad to see the weather has finally broken we're gonna get some rain tomorrow but uh, nevertheless that should help clean the streets up and get rid of the rest of the snow that's lying around. Anyways guys, if you like what you see, please give us a big thumbs up and if you want to watch some more videos, you can check this box right here beside me and please hit subscribe so you can get notified anytime we upload a new video. Thanks again, have a great day and we'll see you in the next upload.